silence all our cell phones, fingers, and whatever electronic devices that we have. And also, uh, I would like everyone to stand for a moment of silence and a pledge to the flag, and also to remember the armed forces serving around the world defending our way of life, especially, unfortunately, I have to tell you about the two airmen that were ambushed yesterday in Frankfurt, Germany. I think it's just an atrocity, and I want you to remember them in our moment of silence.
to recognize the brave men and women who afforded us the opportunity to dream of better days ahead. The United States military sacrificed for us and defend our freedoms, and for that we all salute you. We'd like to welcome home those who have returned after serving our nation so courageously. And to the injured, we wish them a healthy recovery. To the members that are still missing, we say never forget. To those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, a forever grateful County of Orange honors your memory and we will do that forever. This past year saw great accomplishments on behalf of our residents. Our financial house is in order, our public safety efforts are second to none, and our commitment to the overall quality of life remains the top priority of this administration. Orange County has a balanced budget that reduces taxes by $4 million. Our AAA bond rating has been reaffirmed confirming our county's strong financial position not only today, but certainly well into the future. We have completed building the SUNY Newburgh Branch Campus on time and under budget. We have streamlined government services to improve efficiencies. Mr. Chairman, legislators, fellow citizens, the state of our county remains strong, healthy, and ready for the challenges ahead. Our nation remains in the midst of a fiscal and financial crisis as the United States is $14 trillion in debt. The state of New York has a $10 billion budget short gap. God knows where it takes us next year. Here in Orange County, Nine of New York State's mandates consume 80% of the county property tax level. Under these extremely difficult circumstances that aren't controlled by Orange County, this administration has been forced to make hard and sometimes unpopular policy decisions, not only to keep the county solvent, but to responsibly promote and prompt its development and nurture its future growth. To do anything less would be irresponsible of me as your county executive. The role of government is to create conditions we may all flourish to make the most of our future. Although I believe government's role in people's lives is vital, it should be limited as envisioned by our founding fathers, because only with limited government will we be able to pursue our own happiness. I have kept this philosophy since I was first took office, focusing on improving the foundations of what REAP really means and impacts Orange County's quality of life most. Ensuring the public's safety, presenting responsible budget, and maintaining solid county infrastructure. By working together, we are strong enough to keep these pillars firmly in place, creating better lives for ourselves, our children, and certainly our grandchildren. As I describe in detail some of the actions Orange County has taken over the last year, please know that each elected official Commissioner with department head, and all the employees of Orange County work constantly and tirelessly to improve the lives of all our fellow citizens. Whether you are specifically mentioned in this address today or not, you are all part of Team Orange, and you deserve our thanks for doing the people's work. Protecting the public is our top priority. And in Orange County, that means a coordinated public safety effort between the District Attorney's Office, the Department of Emergency Services, the Sheriff's Office, and the Department of Probation. In 2010, 
the Orange County District Attorney's Office continued their excellent track record that resulted in a felony conviction rate of over 95%. also works on preventing future crime through programs that divert and rehabilitate first-time offenders. District Attorney Phillips has served this, our county, as your district attorney since January of 1986. Seeking justice for those who have been victimized while applying the law firmly and yet fairly. He marks a milestone having just completed his 25th year in office. Please join me in congratulating and thanking Frank for his service to the people of Orange County. <laughs> Commissioner Walter Corey oversees the five divisions that make up the Department of Emergency Services. Together, emergency management, fire services, police liaison services, emergency medical services, and E911 provide for the safety of all Orange County residents. Several years ago, we invested in a new state-of-the-art emergency services center, certainly a worthwhile commitment for the safety of our residents. Our facilities fast-growing reputation as the best emergency service center on the eastern seaboard is an achievement of which we all should be very proud of. This past year, 911 answered more than 260,000 calls, a 6.5% increase over the year 2009. And along with the county's mental health department, <laughs> created the county's first address-based 911 registration system for people with developmental disabilities, ensuring their safety under the leadership, ensuring their safety. Under the leadership of Deputy Commissioner Seamus Leary, Orange County is one of only 18 counties in New York State to be and have the designation as storm ready by the National Weather Service. In the Division of Police Liaison Services, Deputy Commissioner Craig Cherry is overseeing the completion of the automatic vehicle locator dispatching system, a real-time police response software system coordinated <laughs> with 31 police agencies, including the Sheriff's Office and the State Police and linking approximately 365 police vehicles, enhancing public safety, but just as important, officer safety as well. This legislature be very proud of that. Police liaison services now also administers the Traffic Safety Board stop DWI programs here in Orange County, focused on the safety of all our young people the future of Orange County. There are just a few highlights from their daily work. You may have learned and heard about media reports about two West Point cadets who were trapped on Storm King Mountain. What many people probably don't know is the role that the Orange County Emergency Services played in this 10-hour ordeal involving 13 municipalities. Not only did the original 911 call for help coming to our emergency services center, but our 911 staff worked for hours tirelessly <laughs> trying to find helicopter support that would take on a rescue mission with extremely high winds in, at midnight in the darkness of midnight. Once that challenge was met, Orange County's enhanced 911 technology was used to triangulate the cadet's cell phone signal to pinpoint their exact location, resulting in their rescue and their school. I want to thank 
Allen McVicky, Deputy Commissioner of 911, who's here today on behalf of that entire team. So, Alan, I think you're in the room. Thank you for leading such a great The Orange County Sheriff's Office, under the able leadership of Sheriff Carl DeVoy, continues to secure the peace and safety of all our citizens here in Orange County. Last May, in another high-profile media report, we saw how the Sheriff's Office assisted the FBI, the Marshal Services, New York State Police, and local authorities in coordinating pre-dawn raids in the city of Newport to combat drug trafficking and gang violence. These efforts were meant to bring hope to a city of 29,000, to bring hope back to that great city on the banks of the Hudson by crushing gang violence and gang culture. And they continue to do that each and every day. I want to thank them. The Orange County Department The Orange County Department of Probation has a mission to improve public safety. Now for this department, new for this department in 2010, was the implementation of policies and procedures to handle DWI cases sentenced under Leander's law. As the department has designated the monitoring agency for ignition interlock devices for both probation and conditional discharge cases. After providing for the safety of our citizens, I believe the most important role of county government is to be a responsible steward of county finances. Every decision made is weighed against its potential financial impact in order to maintain and preserve our county's fiscal health for future generations to enjoy. As I mentioned earlier, Orange County once again received a AAA bond rating by Moody's Investor Services due to the conservative fiscal practices of my administration as well as this legislative body. This happened just last week. We should all be very proud of this distinction. According to Moody's, our county government enjoys a low-level risk reflecting Orange County's strong financial performance. We are one of only two counties in New York State to currently hold this distinction. I can tell you one other thing, something that's even more unbelievable. Uh, we are only one of 87 counties out of 3,140 counties nationwide to hold the same distinction. In addition, Orange County was awarded a Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting by the Government Financial Officers Association. We were also recognized as outstanding for our popular annual financial report. These awards acknowledge governments who maintain high standards of excellence in financial reporting and demonstrate a spirit of full disclosure. Say that again a spirit of full disclosure to clearly communicate a full financial picture to the entire public. When speaking of the economy and finances, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our job creation efforts. Jobs and jobs, don't forget. Them. The future of Orange County will only be brighter if we have enough good paying jobs for our citizens. Job creation and retention are paramount to our sustainability as a thriving and great county. That's why I have tasked Deputy County Executive James O'Donnell to continue to direct the County's Office of Business, Assistance, of Business Assistance. This office works in cooperation with the IDA under the great leadership of Jim Petro, the Orange County Business Accelerator, under the leadership of Mr. Mike Tulo, the Orange County Partnership, under the great leadership of Maureen Hallahan, 
and certainly the Orange County Chamber of Commerce, my good friend, Dr. John D'Ambrosio, all of them working hard and tirelessly to attract and retain and expand businesses in this county, the County of Orange. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. As a result of their efforts, last year we retained over 400 jobs. Added 900, 596 jobs for the residents of our county and received over $80 million in capital investment in the year 2010. And that's all been done during a down economy. We saw companies like Comar Laboratories, Array Optronics, Taylor Biomass, CNS Grocers, Short Line Coach USA, and Staff Foods either recommit expand or open businesses right here in Orange County just last year. Another bright spot in our efforts to retain and attract business is Stewart International Airport. Under the great leadership of Diane Eller and now being managed by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Stewart is on the rise again after having made significant structural improvements and expanding services to more destinations, including its first international service, which started just three weeks ago. A key, in <laughs> a key industry in Orange County, and one that I would be, I want to highlight, is agriculture. Agriculture is still our number one industry. Agriculture in Orange County, still number one. It has a rich history and a proud future, future in our county. During these difficult times, we are committed to working with our partners in the agriculture community and continue to support this important industry each and every day. Orange County is committed to doing everything we can to help our residents find jobs. Our Office of Employment and Training directed by Stephen Knob, counsels job seekers on employment skills, making them more marketable to potential employers, <laughs> while they also recommend candidates to local business who seek to hire them. In 2010, Orange County One Stop Career Centers served more than 9,000 residents in our three cities alone. In total, ETA assisted in placing over 3,600 Orange County residents in employment despite the poor economic climate. ETA also hosted the 11th Annual Orange County Job Fair in May at the Galleria Mall on Crystal Run Road. With 55 companies participating and 2,000 people attending, it resulted in approximately 400 job, permanent job placements right here in Orange County. Together with the County's Department of Social Services and the Regional Action Community Action Plan Recap, ETA helped open the Fresh Start Cafe, culinary programs in the cities of Newburgh and the cities of Middletown. These programs offer an invaluable opportunity for trainees to make positive changes in their future as they acquire employment skills to successfully enter the workforce. Programs and initiatives need to be reformed if we are to regain our title as the Empire State. No matter how hard Orange County works to secure jobs for our residents, the fact is many businesses decide where to locate based on the state's business environment. Here in New York, the business community is often burdened with high taxes, never-ending regulations, in, a, in an expensive workforce. But it doesn't have to be that way. A good place to start is by repealing the MTA payroll tax. It's the most unfair, regressive, job-killing measure that I have seen in all my years in government service. 
supporting the MTA at the expense of local employers is outrageous. Outrageous, to say the least. Especially given the disparity of dollars Orange sends to the MTA for the amount of services that we receive back. This tax obstructs jobs creation and continues to devastate our local economy. In stark contrast to the New York State budget issues, by working with this legislature, Orange County has a balanced budget that reduces taxes by $4 million. It was presented on time and meets our obligations for the critical services while providing genuine tax relief to the County of Orange residents. This is a difficult task, considering that nine New York State mandates consume 80% of Orange County's property tax levy. After these mandates, Medicaid, public assistance, child welfare, preschool special education, early intervention, indigent defense, probation, youth detention and, and pensions, Orange County would have been able to reduce its taxes much more than the four million that we did do. Clearly, mandate date relief is no longer an option. It's no longer an option. It's a necessity that has to happen now. The time for the rhetoric is over. The time for action is now. Listen well. These services need to be reevaluated at the local level where they are administered. We administer them here, they should listen to us. The county needs a strong voice on the programs we deliver every day. We know where the system works well, where it breaks down, and how to make it more efficient and more effective. Medicaid in its current form is absolutely unsustainable. It looks nothing like the program that was initiated in the mid-1960s to serve as a simple safety net built on the platform of county services to provide for the health and welfare of its residents. Orange County residents will pay $73.5 million this year to support Medicaid. The cost we pay per recipient is three times higher than any other state because New York State requires that 39 services be provided. Even though the federal government only requires we do 19. I can assure you that Medicaid funding is one of the most critical issues facing county governments. I urge our federal lawmakers to support the permanent funding of FMAP, the Federal Medical Assistance Program, which is a Medicaid matching rate that helps states pay for the shared cost of Medicaid. We desperately need an overhaul in the state's pension system as well. In Orange County, we budgeted $22 million for New York State pension costs in the year 2011. An increase of $5.2 million, or 32% from the year 2010. And yet, we have little or no control over the pension benefits awarded to our own employees. By the year 2014, state required contributions for county pensions will consume nearly 25% of our entire county property tax levy. During these trying financial times, we continue to support our fellow citizens who have fallen on difficult circumstances. The Orange County Office of Community Development, along with the Orange County Rural Development Advisory Corp, organized a foreclosure workshop service in series to help homeowners over the course of three weekends, workshops representatives from six banks 
had one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one meetings with over 300 Orange County residents to discuss the process loan modifications in hopes of preventing foreclosures. I'd like to focus now on the Orange County internal infrastructure, our own internal infrastructure. I believe responsible government means we should always be looking to improve how we serve the people. By reviewing what works and what doesn't, better policies may be, then be put in place for better results. This is good governance and makes great business sense as well. This legislature moved forward and funded a study that will give us options regarding the future of Valley View, the county's licensed skilled nursing facility that provides 24-hour care as it operates on an annual deficit subsidized by the taxpayers of Orange County. The current subsidy is $18 million. The review of Valley View is being done in a responsible manner that, that takes into account the many aspects of government-run health care facilities. I thank the legislature for taking this important and appropriate action. The New York State Burger Commission report resulted in the closing of the Perry Building at Valley View. Unfortunately, with fewer residents to serve, staff reductions were necessary. When that decision was announced, I said that the county would stand committed to helping those workers get retrained and hired, and I stood by my word, as well as this legislature. I am happy to report that as of today, 13 of these workers have been rehired, while others are being trained as certified nursing assistants, enhancing their skills making them even more remarkable. Orange County's newly named Human Resources Department, along with the Department of Risk Management and ETA, worked hard for this positive outcome, focusing on the importance of building human capital. With the approval of the legislature, we've secured and streamlined operations. We've restructured and streamlined operations in order to find new efficiencies. A new Department of General Services was created to centralize procurement, government operations, contract compliance, and grants. James Burpo Bur Bur has been named the Department's first commissioner, unanimously confirmed by this legislature. This new department is working with the Municipal Electric and Gas Alliance, MEGA, a consortium that pools potential customers and bids out power loads to private energy service companies, resulting in significant savings to the County of Orange. I want to thank the Orange County Legislature for passing the resolution allowing Orange County to apply for membership in the Hudson Valley Local Government Cooperative Purchasing Project, allowing the County and even our municipal and local non-for-profits to now take advantage of pooled purchasing of goods and services to reduce their costs as well. In these difficult times, government must continue to find efficiencies in our, in our operations. That's why back in 2009, the county introduced Lean Six Sigma program that focuses on customer satisfaction and enhanced performance here to use project management to drive the results. Orange County is customer driven, and we believe this training program enhances our employees' efficiencies and effectiveness. Product productivity and interaction with the public, our customers. The public is our customers. To date, 100 Orange County employees have been trained in this very valuable program. We've already seen results. The County Department of Health's Early Intervention Division received the Making a Difference Award from the New York State Department of Health 
in recognition of the staff credits with their Lean Six Sigma program and training. So we've got an award from the state of Reading on that. It's no surprise to everyone here that our county government center is falling apart and will require significant and costly repairs to continue operating. We've already spent millions of dollars over the years on the maintenance of this now 44-year-old building, including fixing 85 roofs, replacing an, an, the overhang on the building's facet, and I could go on and on. Nine years ago, nine years ago, I spoke about the inefficiencies and the need to address the inadequacies of this building. Today, I'm pleased that we are moving forward with the cost analysis study and exploring opportunities to build new. We look forward to the study's findings and working with this legislature later this year. Commissioner Charles Lee directs the Department of Public Works, which is responsible for maintaining the county's infrastructure. This department provides many services to the public in a safe, efficient, and cost-effective manner concentrating on the county's buildings, roads, bridges, and solid waste management. In 2010, the DPW crews paved or surface, resurfaced, treated 34 miles of county roads, completed construction on the Rue Road, painted 20 bridges, and replaced the deck structure for the Three Land Street Bridge in Monroe, the reconstruction of Petticoat Lane Bridge in the town of Crawford, <laughs> I should trust I hope you cross that out. <laughs> DPW also oversaw the construction of phase one for the Gonzaga Park, our first Orange County park in the southern tier of Orange County. DPW also worked with the County Law Department to submit a comprehensive county solid waste management plan to the State Department of Environmental Protection and 145,000 tons of material was processed at our county's three solid waste transfer stations last year alone. Additionally, our plans to improve Orange County's airport are on target as we now have completed land acquisition of 71 acres to facilitate the expansion of the airport's main runway to improve safety and allow for enhanced airport operations. When speaking of the future of our county, we must make sure that we plan in a responsible manner. The Orange County Planning Department and Commissioner David Church continue to provide a framework for development that respects our overall master plan, environmental assessments, and provides consistent application of land use regulations. Last year, the Department of Planning completed over 497 reviews of individual planning and zoning permits referred by other municipalities in the county. In addition, the first ever waste water master plan was developed jointly by the County of Orange, the County Planning Board, and the Orange County Water Authority. The Planning Department took part in nearly two dozen public forums meetings and hearings to listen to the residents' comments, concerns, and suggestions on this topic. This plan addresses the county's water supply and water resource protection priorities well into the future and is adopted by this legislature, this body, just last year alone. The county comprehensive plan was updated and the five-year review was also completed by the planning department. This included the first ever chapters on affordable housing needs, water supply, and resource protection, and water resource protection, as well as updated priority growth areas and improving on those maps. With a population of over 380,000 people and the fastest growing county in the state of New York, most Orange County residents use the high quality services of County Clerk Donna Benson's office recording land records and court documents, utilizing one of the four motor, county, motor vehicle county offices, obtaining passports, and other services. Got it, thank you. <laughs> C 
seniors are quickly becoming the major demographic of Orange County. <laughs> the Office of for the I right there now. The Office for the Aging works to protect seniors' interests while meeting their needs as valued contributors to our community. Directed by Anne Marie Maglione, this department builds itself as the first and only stop seniors need to make to receive countywide services. Aging programs include providing over 215,000 home delivered meals or congregate meals, in home personal care, legal services, caregiver help, health and education services, volunteer opportunities counseling on insurance, help with tax preparation, and assistance with the federal home energy program called HEAP. At the same time, we must not forget the future of our county, our youth. It is with them in mind that the county invested in education by building a new SUNY Orange Branch campus in Newburgh. I am proud to report that Captain Hall was finished on time and under budget, and students are sitting in that building today. In January, students began using the newly constructed state-of-the-art 87,000-foot educational facility. In 2010, Orange County was recognized at one of the nation's 100 best communities for young people by the Americans Promise Alliance, the nation's largest partnership organization dedicated to youth and children. I'm very proud of this award as it shows we're making the right choices in planning for our county's future, our youth. I want to thank Orange County Youth Bureau Executive Director Carol Chichester for her department's programs and services, which led us to this distinguished and prestigious award. The Youth Bureau has been a county department for 33 years and is funded by the state of New York, mostly. But in the governor's recent budget address, it announced the state will no longer be financially supportive of this office. I urge the New York State Legislature to review this decision and reinstate total funding to the youth across the state of New York. <laughs> the Mental Health Department, led by Commissioner Chris Ashton, is responsible for the planning, development, and coordination of services in the field of mental health, development disabilities, and chemical dependency treatment and prevention within Orange County. Recent tragedies with respect to teen suicide have heightened the need for this awareness and intervention, and this department has been working closely and tirelessly with our schools, religious institutions, and community leaders to help our youth and families understand the choices available to them during this time of great crisis. Commissioner David Jolly leads the county's Department of Social Services, a department that provides and manages a wide range of social programs to help our friends and neighbors in need. In these challenging economic times, it's no surprise to hear that families and individuals receiving temporary assistance increase in the year 2010 by over 10 percent. And the Medicaid program realized a 7 percent increase as well from the year 2009. One of the innovative programs to help move people from de dependency to independence is the Center for Hope in Newburgh. This facility offers educational and recreational opportunities for youth and their families in order to provide for alternatives to the negative influences affecting our youth. Another successful initiative that will reduce the cost and improve services is the Regional Managed Medical Transportation Services. This project will reduce the cost of Medicaid consumers receiving non-emergency medical transportation services 
while improving service quality. Recognized for its innovation, this program was recently adopted by the entire state of New York as a model program that was created right here in Orange County. As we all know, freedom isn't free. It comes at a dear price. The Orange County Department of Veterans Services Agency, directed by Tony Zippo, provides counseling and assistance to Orange County veterans, their dependents, and active duty personnel as well. Director Zippo, his staff, and the Orange County Advisory Board, and the Orange County Veterans Coalition understand the special needs of this population. 26,715 veterans with their dependents, nearly 100,000 people are being assisted by this department. The agency operates a van service which provides veterans and their dependents transportation to veterans of fair medical facilities from locations throughout Orange County. They run five days a week with over 2,300 2, veterans using this service an increase of over 300 users just over the year 2009. In addition, more than 5,300 have enrolled in a new Veterans Discount Fund, <coughs> a partnership between the County Clerk's Office, the Veterans Agency, and more than 400 local businesses to provide discount items and services for all Orange County veterans. Preventing disease and disability while providing education regarding healthy living and ensuring healthy environment conditions are top priorities of Dr. Jean Hudson in the Orange County Department of Health. This department monitors and protects the health status and health needs of all our residents. They are committed to promising good health, nutrition, and an active lifestyle through education programs, health screenings, and other opportunities to maintain wellness. Our county government was recognized by the American Heart Association for promoting a healthy workplace for employees and encouraging a culture of physical activity in the workplace. Orange County residents are fortunate to have many choices for outdoor pursuits at our award-winning parks and recreational facilities. Commissioner Richard Rose reports that visits at our park have increased 4% over the year 2010 from the previous year. Snow tubing alone increased by over 16%. Orange County's 11.5 mile Heritage Trail is a much beloved and used portion of our county park system as well. This has not gone unnoticed outside of Orange County. In this winter's issue of Rails to Trails, a national membership publication of the nonprofit organization Rails to Trails Conservatory, the Heritage Trail was praised for its accessibility and scenic setting. See for yourself what a great resource we have here in Orange County. Take your family and your friends to Orange County Parks, located on 3,330 acres throughout our very great county and scenic venue. Orange County is committed to protecting the right of our individual citizens. Last year, our Human Rights Commission, with its volunteer board of commissioners, worked hard to foster understanding and secure those basic human rights to which we are all entitled. And for that, we must all thank them. The county attorney's office, under the direction of Councilor David Darwin, helps to maintain efficient, effective, integrity, and financial soundness of Orange County in, the conjunction, in conjunction with my office as well. The county attorney and his staff played an integral role in aiding the planning department to obtaining a $3.5 million grant from the Department of Energy for power savings in county buildings and facilities. I want to thank this legislature for having the foresight to expand this program to our local municipalities. Critical to the future responsibility development of our county 
is the consolidation of the Orange County Sewer District Number One as well. The county's attorney's office has cooperated with the Department of Planning and Environmental Facility Services to obtain a $49,000 New York State Department governing grant, efficiency grant, to help fund the cost of establishing a governing body for this newly consolidated entity when that happens that will facilitate the reliable provisions of water resources and water treatment services to the entire county. The world moves at an increasingly faster and faster pace these days. We see it with the 24-hour news cycle, a global marketplace, and in the way we communicate with others and other people. Well, Orange County is keeping up with it. Today, I'm proud to announce the launch of Orange County's new website at www.orangecountygov.com. Our website has a new look, a more user-friendly feel, and is better designed to showcase our county and all of the services we have in place for our residents, our businesses, and our visitors. It will be an invaluable resource and this new site enables users to now interact with county government by voicing comments and sharing feedback. With the new e-notifications feature, uh, feature, information on topics of your choice may be sent right through your emails. By improving the way we communicate with the public, I hope to get more people, especially young people, excited about what we all the residents and I want to know their thoughts and have the opportunity to respond back to them. I invite you to visit us at www.orangecountygov.com. Bookmark it for easy reference and I encourage you to come see us there often. In closing, I want to thank the Orange County Legislature for their work this past year. I appreciate the exchange of dialogue that helps us address the challenges that Orange County faces. Together. Together. That's the important work. I know we don't always agree, but I hope you know that my decisions are based on what I believe to be in the best interest of the people of the greatest county in the state of New York. Furthermore, let me take the opportunity to mention my staff who works tirelessly, hard, each and every day for the people and the residents of this great county. Donna, Sherry, Doreen, Melanie, Jennifer, Jimmy, Richard, Kristen, and Arisha, I thank you as a colleague of yours, and more importantly, as a friend of yours, for the great work you do each and every day. Last, <laughs> last, but certainly not least, my family is a huge inspiration to me as I do the work I love in serving the people of Orange County. My wife Mary, my daughters Danielle and Lindsay, my son-in-law Marty, my granddaughter Ava, and my new grandson Mark, as well as my extended family. I want to thank you for your continued support in allowing me to do this job. Without you, none of this would be possible, and much of this would not make any sense at all. The world is indeed changing quickly, but I assure you, Orange County is ready for tomorrow, as it is evidenced by the actions of my administration and this legislature. Residents should be confident that their interests are being guarded and their future protected. Fellow citizens, it is an honor and a privilege to serve as your county executive. Thank you. God bless the County of Orange, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
ghosts in New York, not in Poe. If there's a meeting but you cannot go, ghosts in New York, not in Poe. London, Paris, Tokyo, 